The Freedom Tower rising from the ashes of Ground Zero is the very symbol of American resilience, a nation rebuilding after attack. The American brand is all over this project, except for the tower's steel skeleton. Well, not steel, a lot of it comes from Canada. Yes, that's right. It's a Canadian steel company, DCM. The steel itself is forged in Quebec, then trucked down to New York and pieced into what's becoming a 104-story behemoth. The same height as the former World Trade Center and the most expensive skyscraper ever built at more than three billion dollars. Now here high above ground zero, it's not just the steel that's Canadian, but many of the workers too. There's one in the center, Red Hat, a group of Aboriginal Canadians with a long history of high walking ironwork. The men of the Ganawake Reserve in Quebec have been on top of many of New York's biggest skyscrapers, helped build the original World Trade Center, and were involved in the cleanup of its destroyed remnants. They are known as men who love heights, who are fearless, and pass on their skills through their families. My son's working here, you know, so it's next generation again, so that's three generations for me. Of course, it doesn't much matter when you're from all the way up here, the most dangerous and exposed part of construction. So long as you're up for the long hours and hard work, and for many, the weekend brings a quick run back to the border. A lot of guys travel back and forth to Canada, but, you know, me, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to stay. Just, you know, later on in life, I'll make my decision then. So. The new World Trade Center won't be finished by the 10th anniversary of 9-11, but the building itself should be near its maximum height. Canadian steel climbing towards the sky in this American metropolis. David Coleman, CBC News, New York.